Hey people, what's up? K Hart here. Today we're gonna to be flipping a sample into another boom bap banger. And if you've been wanting to make some boom bap of your own, but maybe you've had trouble finding some good samples, I've got the perfect website for you. So please do remember if you enjoy this video, if you learn anything, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for more videos, and let's dive right in. So this, my friends, is a website called Samplet. And it's basically a really cool website that allows you to filter through music videos that have been uploaded to YouTube. And we literally can filter here. So we have a lot of options. We can choose what genre we want. So if we're gonna make boom bap, maybe we want blues, maybe you try classical, hip hop, funk, soul, of course, and some jazz. And those are pretty good options to start with. And then you have even more options. You can choose a style. There are like a ridiculous amount of styles. You can choose if you want vocals, you can choose how many views the video has. So maybe you want something a little more obscure. So let's pull it down to below 50,000 views. And then you can also filter by year. So if you wanna say maybe something from the 70s or 80s, you can filter only those. And then you hit this button. Dois, three. And not everything it shows you is gonna be exactly what you're looking for, but that's part of the fun. It's kind of like modern day crate digging. And just like real crate digging, keep in mind that these samples are not royalty free. They haven't been cleared. They're not like samples on Splice or Loop Cloud. So after playing roulette a few times here, I ran across this. All right, so listening to that sample, it does have some pretty prominent drums, and I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time trying to chop this without taking the drums out somehow. And since I'm using Ableton and I don't have a dedicated stem splitter like some other DAWs, <coughs> FL Studio, I'm gonna use another website called lalal.ai. And unfortunately, it's not free. You do have to pay. They're still running a Black Friday sale, which is what I just bought, 40 bucks for 650 minutes. But um, it actually does a pretty good job from what I've seen, at least for drums. So I put my sample in there, clicked drums for it to take out, and there are the isolated drums. And without drums there. Not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that split and drop it into Ableton. All right, and it is magically nighttime now. Just kidding, I had to go do a few things. But we're gonna start with some drums and let's get this beat going. All right, that sounds pretty good. Uh, that's the beauty of having a MIDI controller that you can actually play this in. You don't have to go through and humanize it afterwards because it's already humanized. So everything looks good. All right, so let's move on to the sample chops. I took that sample that I manually warped and dropped it into a simpler. And it's really important that you consolidate that sample before you drop it into the simpler because consolidating it is gonna save all of those time stretching changes that you made. All right, let's go ahead and lay something down. All right, before we add any processing to this, I'm gonna show you an easy way to make the bass fit with the sample because this already has bass in it, so let's check this out. All right, so what I wanna do here is pop an EQ onto this sample, and I'm gonna throw a low pass on here, basically, so I'm cutting out anything other than the bass frequencies. I'm gonna open that up just a little bit more so I can hear. And I'm just gonna boost this at the fundamental frequency of the bass. So you probably hear this with headphones, maybe not on your phone or on speakers, but I can kind of hear what the bass line is doing right now. It's gonna actually help me determine the key as well. So I can add a bass line and then maybe add some chords after that. So here's a simple bass line that I came up with. And really that EQ trick I showed you helped me with two things. It helped me figure out the key that the sample is in now that I transposed it, which is C sharp minor, I believe. And I'm starting on that root note, the C sharp. And it also helped me just kind of get an actual pattern that's gonna fit with the bass that's already playing. So I wanna kind of match them so they're kind of complementing each other and I'm not having two kind of bass lines happening at the same time. So most of the times when I'm chopping a sample up, I'm taking pieces of it out that can make it sound thin overall. And so what I like to do is listen back to the original and add some things that are maybe missing and just make it sound like it's part of the original sample to begin with. 
So the two things standing out to me is there's an electric guitar and there's what sounds like an electric piano. So I'm gonna opt for the electric piano. I'm gonna grab a Wurlitzer from Arturia and add some chords. All right, so let's check out these chords. So we already know we're in C-sharp minor thanks to our little bass trick. So we're starting on the one chord, which is the C-sharp minor. So this is the triad, we're adding that B to make it a seventh. Next, we're gonna come down to this F-sharp minor, and this is an add nine, because we have that G-sharp, we're skipping the seventh, which would normally be like that. So we just have an F-sharp minor, add nine, and then we're coming up to this nice chord here, which is the five. And a lot of times in Neo Soul, R&B, anything like that, you're gonna have what's called a dominant uh, seventh. And that's what this is, because we're taking the C, which you can see is not in scale, and we're raising it by one semitone. And so it goes from being a G-sharp minor to a G-sharp dominant seven, which gives it a lot of tension and just a really, really nice chord to turn around back to the one chord. All right, so for processing on these keys, I'm adding a little bit of overdrive just to make it sound a little crunchy. Doing some EQ to duck any of those lows, and I'm boosting a little bit of the highs. I'm using Ableton's Chorus Ensemble on the vibrato effect just to give it a little bit of that pitch wobble. Not too much. And then this side chain, I'm actually going to add to pretty much every other track. It's just a side chain to the kick just to give it that little bit of ducking. And for the sample, I'm doing something similar. So I've got an EQ here, just cutting any of those very lows and just stamping some of the highs to make it sound a little more muffled. Chorus ensemble on the vibrato effect again, and some side chain. And I feel like just to give this a little bit more top end, I wanted to add one more kind of like bright, shiny thing. So I found this bell. And as you can see, I'm just very, very sparingly adding this in to just kind of accent some of the uh, keys when the chords change. All right, that's a solid loop to start. I'm gonna go ahead and arrange this a little bit. So I'm gonna do control I to insert, let's say four bars to just start. And what I wanna do is take this original sample and just drag this up here to serve as an intro. And that's a little long, might have to move the original loop back, but that's okay. Let's bring some drums back real quick. All right, so I feel like for the intro, these drums are a little too busy. So I'm gonna come in here and just remove like a bunch of the kicks and just keep like a simple hi-hat and snare pattern. And that part right there, I want that to repeat like three times here. So I'm just gonna select that section, Control D. Duplicate it out. All right, and let's take that last section of the vocal and do my favorite little like tape stop effect. So I'm gonna add this kind of upside down triangle here. We'll drag this all the way to the end and I'm just automating the clip transposition. So it's gonna quickly go way down in pitch and slow down. Perfect. I'm gonna just go ahead and make the drums sound a little bit glitchier too to go with that vocal that's repeating. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this double kick over. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate all of this main loop out. Let's get those drums. I'm gonna take the bell out. And let's go ahead and duplicate this all one more time. And I think this section will probably drop everything out for maybe a, no, yeah, maybe a measure. So let's take the kick and the snare out so we just have the hi-hats playing. Okay, let's copy the keys over. Should we take those out? Eh, I don't know about the keys, but all right, I need something more impactful. Kick isn't gonna work, I need to go find a symbol. All right, so let's add that symbol there. I'm also gonna add an auto filter on this intro and just automate this so it turns off right before it hits our main sample chop loop. And I'm gonna copy and put that onto the drums as well so the whole intro kind of sounds that muffled band pass. 
And you know what, let's add that same auto filter to the sample chop as well. I'm gonna automate it to turn on during that little break. And then we'll have it turn back off. And I think that's about all I'm gonna do for this one. So let's go ahead and listen to the whole thing. And that original sample is so good. video.